Hi boys and girls, this is Mrs. Maldonado. Welcome back for lesson number seven. All right, so remember I have a guided reading lesson for you, I have a sight word game for you, and I also have a math lesson for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, and I have a new book for you, a new story for our guided reading. And the title of that book is Bear Go Shopping by M Maria Fleming. And it's illustrated by Mike Gordon. Okay, so within our book, boys and girls, you are going to see that there are some vocabulary words. And I have circled our first vocabulary word. And also our vocabulary words are going to be in bold print. So remember, bold print is one of our text features. That means that it's going to stand out. Okay, it's going to stand out. That means it's going to be darker than the other print. All right, so I am going to go ahead and get started with uh, reading our story for today. Okay, and it says, Brr, the days are getting cold. Bear is getting sleepy. It is time to get ready for his long winter nap. Who remembers what we call that when the bears take a long winter nap? Yes, that's right. They go into hibernation. The bears hibernate. Bear can purchase everything he needs at the one-stop sleep shop. What will bear buy? Remember, we talked about our vocabulary word. Our vocabulary word is purchase. And that word means to buy something. So when we go to the store, we go to purchase something. That means we go buy something. He rolls his cart around the store. There are a variety of pillows, but the white one is perfect. So our vocabulary here for page four, vocabulary word is variety. And variety means a group of different things. Okay, so this would be a variety of pillows. That means that it's a different kind of pillows. Okay, so if we look up here at the shelf, he has, there's a variety. That means there's different kinds of pillows. But he chose the white one because he said that one was the perfect one. All right, and for page number five, our vocabulary word is choose. Okay, look at all the pajamas. Which pair will Bear choose? He picks the pajamas with snowflakes. And choose, boys and girls, means to pick something from a group of things. So there's a lot of things, and you get to choose one from that. You pick one out. For example, they might tell you, they might give you, um, say, different kinds of colors, crayons. And they tell you, please choose one. So that means you have to pick one from that group. Bear likes these fuzzy red slippers. Uh-oh, they cost a lot. He will have to find a less expensive pair. So our vocabulary word for page number six is expensive. And expensive, boys and girls, means costing a lot of money. So if we look at the at the red fuzzy slippers that he was looking at, how much how much are they? It says thirty dollars, boys and girls. And if we look at the shelf here where he's shopping at the store, we see that there's some for for ten dollars and even some for fifteen dollars. So he got the ones that were most expensive. So he needs to find some that are less expensive, that are not as expensive. So he won't have to spend so much money. Okay, so let's look at page number seven. Can Bear afford a bedtime book? Yes, he has enough money. Okay, so the vocabulary word is afford. So if we look at the details of the illustrations on page number seven, what do you think that word afford means? Yes, that means to have enough money to buy something. And we can see that Bear has his wallet in his hand and he's pulled out some uh, dollar bills. So it's that's how we know that he can afford to buy the book because he has money to pay for it. Okay. At last, 
Bear is done shopping. He stands in line to pay for everything. Other customers give Bear funny looks. Bear just smiles at these shoppers. So by looking at the details in the illustrations, boys and girls, what do you think customers are? Because he's, he's referring to people or shoppers. Okay, so the vocabulary word customers mean that they are people who buy things. So when you and I go to a store, we are customers because we are there to buy something, to purchase something. So we see that there's a long line of people behind Bear, a long line of what? That's right, we're using our vocabulary word, a long line of customers. Back home, Bear gets ready for bed. His new pajamas are soft and warm. His new blanket is cozy too. And it looks like he also has his uh, bedtime book, boys and girls. He's reading his bedtime book. But he's all done and he has gone to sleep. Oops, let me go back to my page here. There we go. Okay, he's all done and he's gone to sleep and it, it looks, he's getting ready to go to sleep and he's staring up at the ceiling and it says Bear is very tired, but he can't fall asleep. Something is missing, but what? What do you think could be missing? He's got his book, he's got his pajamas, and but there's something missing. What could it be? Well, let's read the next page and find out. Okay, it says, suddenly, Bear jumps out of bed. He grabs his wallet and races back to the store. He forgot to buy the most important thing. A teddy bear to snuggle. Soon, Bear is fast asleep dreaming sweet dreams of spring. So what did he forget, boys and girls? Yes, he forgot his teddy bear. He just needed to go back and get his teddy bear. Very important, right? All right, so let's look our two, at our two vocabulary words. So the vocabulary word on page number 12 is wallet. And if we see bear there in the illustration, he's holding his wallet in his hand. Okay, remember the wallet is where we keep our money. Remember he was pulling out his dollar bills when he was going to buy his bedtime storybook? Well, now he's carrying his wallet in his hand because he needs to go buy a teddy bear. And our vocabulary word in page number 13 is snuggle. Okay, so what is snuggle? Well, snuggle means to hold something close in a loving way. So what is he, what is he uh, using to snuggle? Yes, his very own teddy bear. He needed to go back to buy. All right, boys and girls, so now we have a vocabulary meaning match, okay? And these are the same vocabulary words that we have been practicing and learning throughout our story, okay? So what I am going to do is I am going to read each definition to you and then we are going to look at our word chest here and check to see which word matches with that definition okay so we are looking at number one where i just placed a check mark a group of different things remember that there was a different kind of pillows that means which word we have customers Expensive, snuggle, wallet, variety, choose, purchase, and afford. That's right, variety. So I am going to put a number one right there next to variety because variety means a group of different things. Okay, I can also write it here. Variety. Okay, number two to pick out something from a group. Remember that he had to pick, um, and he picked the pajamas from, there was different kind of clothing there. Yeah, and so he had to what? To pick out something from a group is to what? Very good, that means to choose. So I am going to write the word choose right here because that is the word that goes with that definition. 
Okay, and next for number three, we have costing a lot of money. Remember those red fuzzy slippers in the story, boys and girls? They were what? What was that fancy word when it cost a lot of money? Very good. They were expensive. So I am going to write the word expensive right here because that is the word that matches that definition. Okay, now let's look at number four. Number four means to hold something close in a loving way. When you close something, when you hold something very close to you in a loving way. Remember, he had to go get his teddy bear because he needed to do this with it. What did he need to do? That's right, he needed to snuggle with his teddy bear. Okay, I'm gonna write snuggle right here. Okay, and number five, people who buy things. Remember, those are people that go to the store. What are they called? When you and I go to the store, we're also called that. What, what, what are we, boys and girls? Yes, we are customers. Okay, when we go to the store and buy something, we are customers. Okay, number six, to buy something. Okay, so when we give money to someone and they give us those items that we want, we do what? That's right, we purchase. Okay, to buy something is to purchase. If we go to the store to get something or to buy something, that means we are going to purchase something. All right, and number seven, to have enough money to buy something. Remember, Bear had enough money to what a bedtime storybook. Yes, he had enough money to purchase a bedtime a storybook to afford. That's right, I made a mistake. It means to afford. Okay, he was gonna purchase it, he afforded it. Okay, he had enough money to buy it. He had enough money to purchase it. To have enough money is to afford. Okay, I'm gonna write that word right there. Okay, number eight. A small case for holding money. What was that uh, brown thing that Bear was holding up? And he had all his money in there, boys and girls, and he was taking it out to buy something. What was that called? Yes, that is a wallet. So I am going to write wallet right here. There we go. So those are all of the vocabulary words that we've been learning about in our story, Bear Goes Shopping. All right, let's go to the next page. So now we have to use that word in context. That means we're gonna fill it in in a sentence and use it where it best makes sense. Okay, so for number one, can you blank to pay $15 for that shirt? What word can fit in there to make sense? And we have our word box right here. Okay, customers, expensive, snuggle, wallet, variety, choose, purchase, and afford. Could you blank to pay $15 for that t-shirt? Yes, it's a Ford. That means could you afford, do you have enough money to pay $15 for that t-shirt? Okay, number two. Craig opened up, <clears throat> excuse me, Craig opened up his leather blank and pulled out a dollar bill. What was that thing that Bear had all of his dollar bills in, boys and girls? What was that called? Yes, that is a wallet. That's where he had his money. That's where we keep money in a wallet. So Craig opened up his leather wallet and pulled out a dollar bill. All right, let's go to number three. There are a blank of different fish in the fish tank. Remember that bear was buying a pillow and there was all different kinds of pillows. So what was that word that they use for different kind? Yes, variety, variety. 
So now we're using it in a sentence. There are a variety of different fish in the fish tank. All right, let's go to number four. Wow, that diamond ring is very what? That diamond ring is very what? That means it, it's going to cost a lot of money, boys and girls. So it is very what? Remember, and we have an illustration there in this, in this slide of Bear with his slippers that were very what? Yes, expensive expensive okay so i'm going to read that sentence to you again wow that diamond ring is very expensive all right so let's go to number five i'm sorry yes number five it's my brother's turn to blank which movie we watch tonight so could it be customers snuggle choose or purchase it's my brother's turn to blank which movie we watch tonight yes choose it is my brother's turn to choose which movie we watch tonight that means chooses to pick to pick from okay and number six when I'm sad, I blank my stuffed rabbit to feel better. Remember, rabbit was doing this with his teddy. I'm sorry, bear was doing this with his teddy bear. When we clo hold something close, very good. Snuggle, snuggle. So at night, sometimes we snuggle with our teddy bears or our dolls or whatever it is that we have. Uh, when I'm sad, I snuggle my stuffed rabbit to feel better okay number seven they had a lot of blank at their school bake sale so what are those people boys and girls that when you go to a store to buy something or when you go to buy something you are a what and remember i said you and i when we go to the store we're also called that yes customers customers so i'm gonna read that sentence again they had a lot of customers at their school bake sale so that means people that are going to buy something are customers okay number eight my feet are growing so fast i need to blank new shoes every year so if our if our um shoes don't fit we need to what another pair instead of us uh, saying bye we're going to use another fancy word boys and girls what is that fancy word we learned that is um the same thing as buy yes purchase my feet are growing so fast i need to purchase new shoes every year Boys and girls, you did such a wonderful job with those vocabulary words. Kiss that brain. You're doing such a hard uh, job, uh, doing a great job. The, I know some of these uh, vocabulary words can be a little tricky, boys and girls, but you're learning them. You're doing a great job at it, too. Okay, so now we are going to use those vocabulary words. Um, we're going to use those vocabulary words to answer questions, okay? So these are questions for you, okay? So number one, and boys and girls, you'll have a worksheet or something for you or a paper for you to answer these on your own. So you can go back to the video and um, take your time and answer those questions. Remember when you are answering or writing a sentence, when you're writing a statement, answering a sentence, to start with an uppercase letter, boys and girls. All of our sentences start with an uppercase letter. And all of these are questions. So that means that when we write a sentence to answer these questions, it's going to be a statement. So at the end of a statement, we use a period. So er, at the end of the sentence, a period. Okay, remember uppercase letters and er, a period at the end. Okay, so let's read our first question. Number one. 
What should you do if there's an emergency at home? Okay, I'll read it again. What should you do if there's an emergency at, at home? So take your time to write a, a nice sentence, boys and girls. Make sure that you are using your finger space in between your words, that you're starting with an uppercase letter, and also that you have the proper punctuation at the end, which in this case for your sentence, it's going to be a period. Okay, for number two, what dangers should you be aware of in the kitchen? What dangers should you be aware of in the kitchen? Okay, number three, how should you caution, how should you use caution around strangers? How should you use caution around strangers? All right, boys and girls, um, you might have different vocabulary words or different questions in your worksheet, and that's okay. Uh, these are uh, vocabulary words, these are a review from a pi uh, prior um, book that we read. All right, so now we have our sight word game. Okay, so we have our sight word scrabble. Okay, so what you will have three letters to put together to make a sight word. Okay, so let's see if you can figure it out before I give you the answer. Okay, so we are going to look at the lines the two bottom rows that are the red words okay these are our sight words at the bottom so we are going to fix these uh these groups of letters that make a sight word but are not a sight word because they're all mixed up boys and girls so let's look at our first one okay we are going to look at our first one it's y s a well i'm going to look at this word this one does not have a y does not have an S and does not have an A. So I'm gonna to go to the next one. No Y, no S, no A. I see a Y in this one. I see an S, but I do not see an A, so that cannot be it. Okay, this one does not have a Y. This one has a Y, does not have an S or an A. Does not have, a, this one does not have a Y. Okay, and if you see, I'm moving my cursor of the words that I'm talking about. This one does not have a Y. This one does not have a Y. This one has a Y. It has an S and it also has an A. So I think I might have found it. I am going to circle it so I won't lose my place of where I found it. Okay, then I'm gonna write it and see if I'm gonna use all of those letters. And if you want, boys and girls, you can also write these sight words. I want you to write these sight words in a piece of paper because Boys and girls, it's better for you to practice your sight words. So when you go to school next year, okay, you are already going to know how to spell all of your sight words, boys and girls, because you've practiced, okay? So our first letter is an S. I'm going to cross it out. Then we have an A. I'm going to cross that out. And finally, I have a Y, and I'm going to cross that out. So what sight word is that? Say, very good, it's the sight word, say. All right, so we're gonna go to the next group of letters, O-T-O. -O. This one does not have an O, no O's here, no O's here. This one has an O, it has a T, and it has another O, so this might be it. I am going to circle it and see if I'm using all of those letters, boys and girls. The first letter that I have is a T, cross it out and then I have two O's I'm gonna cross both of those out okay and that is the sight word two two okay I'm moving right along to our next one okay we have a E a Y and a S E Y S then I'm gonna go to where my red sight words are this one does not have a Y this it has an E and it does not have an S, so it can't be that one. This one has an E, does not have a Y. This one has an E, it has a Y, and it also has an S. So this one could be it, boys and girls. I am going to circle it, 
Then I'm going to write it in the right order, a Y, then I have an E, and my S at the end. That word spells yes, yes. Okay, next I have a I, D, D. Okay, if I look at this one, there's no I's here, no I's here, there's not an I here, not an I here, there's not an I here, no I's here, but I found an I here, and there's also two D's. Okay, so I am going to circle that. Okay, so I have a D, cross that out, then I have another, I have an I, and then I have another D. Okay, so that sight word is did, did. Okay, next I have R, F, O, R, F, O. Okay, so I'm going to start over here. There's a R. There is not an F, so it can't be that one. No R here. No R here. No R here. Not here. Nor here. Oh, there's an R. There's an F and there's an O. So it might be this one. Okay, so first we have an F. Then we have an O. And last we have an R. And that word is four. Four. Good job, boys and girls. All right, next we have O T N. Okay, no O's here. No O's there, not here, not here. There's an O here, but I do not see a T. Okay, there's an O here, a T and an N. So I think I might have found it. I'm going to circle it so I won't lose it. I have a N first, then I have a O, and finally I have a T, O and a T. That sight word is not, not. Okay, so let's look at our second row of group of words. And our first one is E, D, R. Okay, this one has an E, and it also has a D, and it also has an R. I think we found it on our first try, boys and girls. I'm going to circle it so I won't lose it. Okay, first one is a R, cross it out. Then I have an E cross it out, and then I have a D, cross that one out. Okay, and that sight word is red, red. Okay, next group of words is a E, E, S. Okay, so let's look over here on our first one, and I see two E's and I also see an S. I think we might have found it on our first try again. Circle that one. First we have an S, Cross it out, and then we have two E's that follow the S. What side word is that, boys and girls? Yes, that's the side word C. C. Okay, let's look at our next group of words. We have O T W. O T W. Okay, we do not have an O in this word. There's not an O here. There's an O here, but there is not a W nor a T. So let's look at our last one. We do have a O, we have a T, and we also have a W. So I am going to circle that. We have a T, then we have a W, and then we have an O. What side word is that, boys and girls? Yes, it's the side word two, two. All right, next sight word, boys and girls, or next group of words that's going to be a sight word. It's Y B U. Y B U. Okay, I'm going to start with this one since that's the first one. We already used all, all the ones that are circled. We already used. So I am not going to look at those anymore. Okay, so I am going to only look for the ones that are not circled because it has to be one of them. Okay, so this one has a Y. It also has a B and it also has a U. So that might be the one. So I am going to circle it. Then I am going to spell it, arrange it in the right order. A B, a U, and finally a Y. Okay, so that's the sight word 
by, by. Okay, next we have S U E. Okay, we have an S here, we have a U, and we also have an E. I am going to circle that, then I am going to put it in the correct order a U, an S, and finally an E. Okay, U, S, and a E. And that's the sight word use. Use. Very good. All right, boys and girls, our last group of words, F, O, F. Okay, so we only have one sight word left over, so it must be it. It has two F's and it has an O, so it should be it. Okay, so we have an O, cross it out. Then we have two F's at the end. Okay, and that's the sight word off, off. All right, so let's review our sight words, boys and girls, and um, then we'll be finishing up with our game, our sight word Scrabble game, okay? Please read them with me. I'm gonna start with the top red row, and then we're gonna follow by the bottom red row, okay? Red, uh, first set of words, red, yes, buy, off, say, four, see, two, use, not, did, two. All right, so those are our sight words for today. All right, boys and girls, we're gonna move right along math time with mrs maldonado so let's go ahead and get started with our math lesson for today if you would like boys and girls you can go ahead and get a blank piece of paper or a, a dry erase board or something to write with if you want to follow along with our math lesson for today you will also have an opportunity to do um this lesson on your own if you wish okay so our question is how many blocks are there Okay, so let's count. I am gonna put a number in the blocks. One, you can count along with me, help me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so that's a group of 10 boys and girls. So that reminds me of a tens frame and if you want to draw a tense frame with me, okay, I need for you to draw a rectangle. Okay, draw your rectangle. And next I want you to draw a horizontal line, just like that. Okay, so it's going to be half of the rectangle. Okay, and next we're going to draw four vertical lines. That means they're going up and down. Vertical means up and down. We're gonna draw four of those. Help me count. One, two, three, and four. All right, so this is a tense frame, boys and girls. So remember when your teachers refer to a tense frame, this is what they're talking about. And um, I teach you to draw this tense frame because sometimes uh, some boys and girls wanna draw a tense frame, but really, when they finish drawing their tense frame, they get more than 10 boxes, boys and girls. That's why it's very important to draw only four lines in the center, just like we did. Because if you draw more, then you're gonna have more boxes. Or if you draw less than four, you're not gonna have enough. You're not gonna have more, you're not gonna have 10, you're gonna have less than 10. So let's count and see if we did this correctly, okay, boys and girls? So help me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So it's the same thing. So this is uh, like a tens frame, okay? Because there are 10 boxes. All right, so how many boxes are there? Well, there are 10. All right, how many blocks are there? Well, we already know that this is what, boys and girls? That's right, That we already know that that's 10. So what we're gonna do is, is we're just gonna count on. So I am going to show you another strategy. Okay, the tense frame is one strategy. Now I'm gonna show you a strategy using a number line. 
And boys and girls, in order for your strategy, your number line strategy to be efficient, it needs to start with the larger number. Okay, so we are going to start our number line with 10. We are not going to start our number line with the one. We're, remember, we're starting with the larger number first. Now we are going to count and see how many blocks we have that are extra than 10, okay? So let's count. One, two, and three. So that means that I am going to jump four spaces and it's gonna be forward. Because if we jump forward, that means our number's gonna get bigger, okay? If we go backwards, that means our number is going to get smaller. We do not want our number to get smaller. We want it to get bigger. Okay. So we are going, we're going to move forward three spaces. One, two, and three. And I'm going to stop right here because that is going to be my answer. Okay. So I am going to count on what comes after 10, 11, 12, and 13 okay so my answer is 13 okay i'm also going to write an equation for these blocks 10 plus 3 equals 13 okay so that means that there's our tens frame and then we added three more and in our number number line when we jumped um three jumps we got 13 Okay, let's move right along to the next one. How many blocks are there? Okay, boys and girls, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to circle our tens frame because we already know that's 10. Okay, we don't need to count them all over again. So we have 10. So I'm going to start with my equation here. 10 plus what? Okay, so we let's count. We know that the bottom one is 5 because it's a full line. Remember, 5 plus 5, we have 5 here, and we have 5 here. Okay, 5 plus 5 equals 10. Okay, so we have, we know that that's 5, but I'll just count from the, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's our 5 I was telling you about. And remember, these are two 5s, so we know that two, 5 plus 5 equals 10. But this one, we know that it's missing 1. So we have 5, 6, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, we only have nine here, so 10 plus nine equals what? All right, so then we're gonna draw our number line. What number are we starting with? Yes, we are starting with 10. Remember, for it to be an efficient strategy that you are using, we do not start with one. We start with the largest number, and then we're gonna move forward because we are adding, we're gonna, it's gonna be a larger, a greater number, okay? All right, we're gonna jump how many steps? Yes, we're gonna jump nine steps because that's how many more we're adding to our 10. So help me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine and I'm gonna stop right there. Okay, so that is going to be my answer. So I am gonna count on, okay, remember count on means that you're counting from whatever number forward. You're not counting from one, just like we didn't start our number line with one. We're gonna count on from whatever number we have and keep on counting from there. Okay, so what comes after 11? I mean 10, we have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So our answer is 19. So how many blocks are there? Yes, there are 19 blocks. Okay, let's move along to our next one. How many blocks are there? So remember, boys and girls, we have our tens frame right here. Okay, so we are gonna write our equation. So in your piece of paper, you're gonna write what? Yes, 10, are we gonna add plus or a minus? Yes, it's a plus because there's more. We're not taking away, we're adding more. 
So let's count and see. It looks like five to me because look, it looks like a complete row. But let's count just to double check our work. One, two, three, four, and five. So 10 plus five equals what, boys and girls? All right, well, we're gonna start our number line and it's gonna start with what number? Yes, it's gonna start with 10. Remember, we do not start our number lines with one, not unless our um, equation has a one in it, okay? So we are going to move how many steps forward or how many spaces forward? Yes, five, because we're adding five more. So help me count. I'm going to count five. One, two, three, four, and five. And boys and girls, if you want to make sure that there are five spaces that you moved, you can just put your numbers in here. One, two, three, four, five. Those are, the that, those are the five spaces that we needed to move. So that's just for you to see how many spaces you moved, if you need it. If not, it's okay. But it's just something that you can use to double check your work, okay? Because if you move more than five spaces, you are not going to get the correct answer. You're going to have to revise your knowledge. Okay, so after 10, we have 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. So what is our answer? How many blocks are there? Yes, there are 15 blocks. Okay, let's move right along to our next one. Our next problems, how many blocks are there? We know that there are 10 there because that's our tens frame. So we're gonna write our equation and we're gonna start with the number 10. Okay, because we already used that number, it's in the bottom. 10 plus what? Well, let's check and see. Remember, we have five at the bottom down here, that's five. What comes after five? Six, seven, and eight. Okay, we have 10 plus eight equals what? Okay, so we're gonna draw our number line and we're starting with what number boys and girls yes we start with 10 because 10 is the greater number and we're going to move how many spaces forward yes eight okay so help me count one two three four five six seven and eight i'm going to put my uh Draw my closed circle there because that is going to give me my answer. That's where I stop, okay? So what comes after 10? Remember, we are counting on 10. Help me count. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So we have 18, boys and girls. 10 plus 8 equals 18. So to answer that question, how many blocks are there? We have 18 blocks. Okay, now we are going to do something a little bit different. It's asking us to draw 11 blocks showing groups of 10s and 1s. Remember, boys and girls, that I was showing you and telling you that one of them was the tens frame? So we have, I'm going to draw a tens frame, and that, that's going to be 10, okay? So I want you to draw it with me. Go ahead and draw a rectangle, okay, just like that. And then you're going to draw a, a horizontal line. That means we're going to cut it right in half, draw it in the middle, in the center, horizontal, that means longwise. Okay, and rem do you remember how many lines I told you to draw vertically going up and down? How many? Four. Okay, so you are only going to draw four. So help me count. One, two, three, four. So right there, I have a tense frame. That means I will have 10 blocks. 
but we're gonna put numbers in there just to double check and make sure, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I need 10 plus blank equals 11. How many more blocks do I need, boys and girls? So I'm going to put 10 in my, in my head, 10 and 11. I need one more block. So those are my 10s and though that's my 1s. So 10 plus 1. I could also do this. Okay, a 1 here and a 1 here. Remember, these are our 10s. These are our 1s. I have one 10 and I have one 1. This, that's my 10s and that's my 1. Okay, that's just another way. All right, so we're showing blocks and I'm just showing you the 10s and the 1s. Oh, the All right, now it's asking us to draw 20 blocks showing groups of 10s and 1s. Okay, so that means that I am going to draw my 10s frame Okay, drawing my tens frame right here. Okay, and you can do the same thing. Go ahead and draw a rectangle. Okay, and then a horizontal line straight through the center of it, right across. Okay. And then remember, it's four lines going down horizontally. One, two, three, and four. Okay, and I am going to put my numbers in there just to make sure I have 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so I have 10 plus what is going to give me 20? Well, if we already know that if we know how to count by 10s, we know that we're going to need two uh, sets of 10, okay? So let's check and see. I'm gonna draw another tens frame right beneath that one, okay? And my four lines again, one, two, three, and four, okay? So what comes after 10? I'm gonna count on 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So I did get 20, but I have 10 here and I have 10 here. Remember, it's a tens frame, okay? So 10 plus 10 equals 20. Now, it's asking us to draw groups of tens and ones. Did I have any ones there, boys and girls? This is my number, 20. So it says I have two tens, I do not have any ones, okay? Just two tens. I could draw uh, 20 blocks using tens and ones in a different way. That would mean um, I, would, I could draw, I could do this. I'm gonna draw it right here, another. Um, well, I would have to draw maybe 10, 10 here, whoops, I would have to draw a 10, 10 here, and then I can draw 10 ones, okay, I have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, okay, so I can do one, I have one 10 here, and then I have 10 tens here. So if I add these two together, it would give me the same thing, 10 and 10, that equal 20. All right, boys and girls, let's go to the next one. Draw 14 blocks showing groups of tens and ones. So again, I'm gonna start with my tens frame okay remember your remember your rectangle and then four lines 
going down vertically. One, two, three, and four. And then I'm gonna add 10 plus blank equals 14. So what is my missing number? What comes after 10? Okay, well, we can also use the number line, boys and girls, to find that out, okay? So what comes after 10? 11, 12, 13, and 14. Okay, that's 14. So what's the number that's missing? One, two, three, four. So I'm missing four blocks. One, two, three, and four. So my answer is four. So 10 plus four equals 14. Draw 12 blocks showing groups of tens and ones. Okay, so remember I have my tens frame. One, two, three, four. That makes 10 blocks in there. Okay, so 10 plus blank equals 12. Let's see how many more we're going to need. Again, I'm going to start with my number line. And I'm going to move my jumps until I get to 12. And I'm going to figure out how many more blocks are missing to get to 12. 10, 11, 12. Okay. 1, 2. That means I am missing 2. 1 and 2. So 10 plus 2 equals 12. Just using different strategies here, boys and girls, so you can get used to seeing different strategies and also using different strategies to double check your work. Draw 17 blocks showing groups of tens and ones. Okay, so remember, I want you to get very comfortable drawing your number lines. So rem I'm sorry, your tens frames. So it is a rectangle, then a horizontal line going right through the center, okay, straight across. And then four lines going down vertically. One, two, three, and four. Okay, that makes 10. We already know that. Now 10 plus blank equals 17. So how many more am I going to need? Okay, so I have 10. Then I need to move to get to 17. Okay, help me count. We're gonna count on, okay? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. That's my answer. Okay, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And I already have 17. So let's count those jumps, boys and girls. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So how many jumps did we have to move? Seven. So that's how many more blocks we're going to need. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We have seven blocks. Okay, so 10 plus seven equals 17. Okay, let's go to our next one. All right, so we are all done with our math lessons. So now we are going to, um, now it's your turn actually, to log into Moby Max, okay? So you're gonna go into www.mobymax.com. You're gonna click on the orange sign in tab, okay, which is this one. Okay, click on that. And then you're going to see this screen, okay, at the bottom. Okay, you make sure that you are in as a student and at the top, um, on the right top um, tab, and make sure that you are um, writing or typing in Guadalupe Center under the school name, okay? Because that's gonna get you to where you need to go next. Okay, once you type in Guadalupe, then go ahead and click this find box, okay? Click on that. Make sure you have this on your screen and click on Guadalupe or, or that row there, okay? Once you click on that, make sure that, again, you're in as a student, okay? And you are going to use your 
username and your password there. It's going to be your student number, okay, your lunch number. Your lunch number is going to be at the top for username, and your lunch number is going to be um, for your password, okay? Double check that you have Guadalupe Center there showing as your school, and then go ahead and click sign in, okay? And then after that, you are going to go to the next screen. You're going to come to this screen here at the bottom. Okay, your name's going to be showing up right around there. There's not a name there because it's just for me to show you where you need to go. Okay, so you're going to uh, click on that. Once you see that it's your name because you want to make sure that you're under your account, you're going to click on this uh, green math icon. It says math on it. Okay, once you click on that, then you are ready to start your lesson. Remember, your lesson might be a little bit different than the one that I just finished, but that's okay because either it could have been a review or it's something to um, help you when you get your lesson. All right, boys and girls, I hope you have a great day and have enjoyed my lesson. Till next time.